Okay, so this video is going to show you how to find the Taylor series of more complicated functions. So you can do it just using the definition of Taylor series, but often that's not the best way. So I want to show you a very simple example which shows you why it's not always the best way. Suppose you want to calculate the Taylor series of e to the minus x squared around the point x equals zero. Now if you do this so we'll call this function f of x. If you do this using the definition, then you need to find all of the derivatives of this function, right? So for example, f of x is e to the minus x squared, f prime of x is minus 2x e to the minus x squared, f double prime of x is 4x squared minus 2, e to the minus x squared, f triple prime of x is, so multiply this by minus 2x, so minus 8x cubed, and then here I will get plus 4x, and here I will get plus 8x, so altogether that will give me plus 12x, I think, e to the minus x cubed, and so on. Okay, so you can keep going like this, but you see that this is getting pretty difficult, right? Each time you differentiate, the polynomial term here gets more and more complicated. And what you need to do is calculate the values of this function at 0. So this is 1, this is 0, this is minus 2, this is 0, and so on. So it's going to be hard work finding the Taylor series of this function from the definition. Okay, But there's a much easier way, because we know that e to the x is just 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial, and so on. So you can simply, because again we want a, a sum which is a polynomial in x, you can simply take this Taylor series and then substitute x goes to minus x squared, and that gives you the result straight away. So if x goes to minus x squared, then you get e to the minus x squared is equal to 1 minus x squared plus minus x squared squared over 2 factorial plus minus x cubed, sorry, minus x squared cubed over 3 factorial plus so on is 1 minus x squared plus x to the 4 over 2 factorial minus x to the 6 over 3 factorial. Okay, so this is obviously much faster than this. And even here you can get the infinite sum. We've only got even powers of x, so that gives you x to the 2n divided by n factorial, and it's again plus minus, so times minus 1 to the n. So there you go. You can get the result almost straight away just by making a substitution. x goes to minus x squared. And that's much better than trying to calculate from the definition here. Okay, just another example to make sure you get this idea. Suppose I want to find the Taylor series of 1 over 1 plus x squared at x equals 0. Okay. So again, you could differentiate this function like this, and you'll find that this is also very difficult after a few times. But instead, we know that the Taylor series of 1 over 1 plus x, we worked this one out in the previous video. This is 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed plus x to the 4, and so on. Therefore, if we just substitute x goes to x squared, this gives you 1 over 1 plus x squared is 1 minus x squared plus x to the 4 minus x to the 6, and so on. So again, substitution in this case as well is much, much easier than calculating the Taylor series from the definition. Okay. So you have to be a little bit 
careful about this. So let me number these examples. Example one, example two, example three. So here's an example where simple substitution doesn't work. Suppose I wanted you to find the Taylor series of 1 over 1 plus 1 plus x squared at x equals, sorry, a equals 0. So these should all be a equals 0. Around the point a equals 0. Okay, so again we know this, so you might just think if you substitute x goes to 1 plus x squared, then you get that 1 over 1 plus 1 plus x squared is 1 minus 1 plus x squared plus 1 plus x to the 4 minus 1 plus x to the 6 and so on. So you might think that's the answer. That's not the answer. The reason it's not the answer is that a Taylor series around the point a equals 0 must be a sum of some numbers times x to the power n. Okay? So it must be of the form a sequence of x to the power n. Whereas here it's a sequence of x plus 1 to the power n. So this is not a Taylor series around a equals 0. In fact, this is a Taylor series around a equals minus 1. Right? Because in the Taylor series, in the general Taylor series, you get some n goes from 0 to infinity, fn of a over n factorial x minus a to the n. So you see what they've done here is you've got x plus 1 here. So that means that a is minus 1. Okay, so therefore simple substitution does not work. So does that mean you have to go back to calculating the derivatives like this? No, there's still a simpler way. So the simpler way here is to multiply out this 1 plus x squared first. So you get coefficients of x to the power n. So what you do is you write 1 over 1 plus 1 plus x squared is equal to 1 over 1 plus x squared plus 2x plus 1 which I can write as 1 over 2 plus 2x plus x squared, which I can write as a half, 1 over 1 plus x plus x squared over 2. <clears throat> and now you see that, again, what you've got here looks a lot like the basic Taylor series, this one except that instead of x, you've got x plus x squared over 2. Now if you do the substitution for this, in other words, you make x go to x plus x squared over 2, then you do get a series that you can expand as a polynomial in x. Okay. So I take this Taylor series and I substitute x goes to x plus x squared over 2, the factor of the half stays out the front. So you get 1 minus x, so that's 1 minus x plus x squared over 2, plus x squared, so that's plus x plus x squared over 2 squared. Um, I'll just do one more. I probably only need to do two more. x cubed, so that's minus x plus x squared over 2 cubed. And finally, the term I'll do is x plus x squared over 2 to the power of 4, and so on. So this is not quite there yet, because we really need to expand these to find the total coefficient of x, total coefficient of x squared, and so on. So let's do that now. So I'm working from this expression here. This is equal to, this is Taylor series. The constant term is just a half, right, from here. So it's a half. The coefficient of x the only place you have just 1x is here, so that's minus 1 half, so minus a half x. Then x squared, the, you can get x squared from two different places. You can get it from, from here, which gives you minus x squared over 4, 
and you can also get it from here which gives you plus x squared times a half so altogether you have plus a half minus a quarter times x squared right? is that clear? so there's x squared over 2 here but you also get an x squared from this term here ok, um, I'll go up to x to the 4 so x cubed, where can we get an x cubed term? you can get one from here this gives you x cubed plus x cubed times a half so I get a half times x cubed and you can also get an x cubed from here which gives you x cubed times minus a half so you get a half minus a half which therefore gives you zero x cubed last one x to the 4, where can you get x to the 4? so you can get it from here this gives you x to the 4 over 4 times a half which is an eighth then you can get it from here this one times this one twice which you can do in three different ways so this gives you three halves times minus times a half so that's minus three quarters and finally you get plus x to the four from here times a half so plus a half all that times x to the four and so on so x half minus a half x half minus a quarter is a quarter there is no x cubed term and the x to the 4 term is um, well let's put everything over 8 1 minus 6 plus 4 over 8 x to the 4 so this turns out to be minus an eighth x to the 4 ok so here we've only worked out the first few terms and in general for something like this you can't work out the total sum in other words for this function it's not possible to write down the answer as a sum like we did here but you can do it term by term so I've calculated the answer up to x to the power 4 okay and if you look on the practice sheet this week I ask you to find all of the Taylor series up to the power x to the 4 so some of them you can find an infinite sum but many of them you can't solve the infinite sum exactly so I ask you just to find the numbers up to x to the power 4 as I've done here so that was example 3 now we're going to look at another example which is slightly different way to calculate okay so example 4 this is log of 1 plus x divided by 1 plus x squared now this is a case where you've multiplied two functions together for which you know the Taylor series we know that log of 1 plus x gives you the Taylor series x minus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 minus x to the 4 over 4 plus x to the 5 over 5 and so on and we know um, 1 over 1 plus x squared gives you the Taylor series 1 minus x squared plus x to the 4 and so on so therefore we can get the Taylor series of this times this just by multiplying the two Taylor series together so in other words the Taylor series of log of 1 plus x divided by 1 plus x squared is just the multiple multiplication of these two Taylor series so that's x minus x squared over 2 again I'll just go up to the fourth power of x so that's that and that's that okay. so this is the Taylor series of log 1 plus x this is the Taylor series of 1 over 1 plus x squared and if you multiply them together coefficient of x is just 1 you only get 1x from here you only get 1x squared as well from here so that's minus x squared over 2 x cubed you can get in two different ways I can do this times this which gives me a third x cubed and I can do this times this which gives me minus 1x cubed and again x to the 4 you can get in two different ways as well I can do this times this which gives me minus a quarter or I can do this times this which gives me plus a half 
Okay, so this one turns out to be x minus x squared over 2 minus 2 thirds x cubed minus a quarter x to the 4 and so on. Okay, so I'm going to do another example now. Um, this is a very quick example. Suppose I wanted you to find, so okay, I should say here this is again a equals zero. Suppose I wanted to find the Taylor series of cos x times sin x, again around the point a equals zero. So you could do this in the same way as here, in other words, you write out the Taylor series for cos x, you write out the Taylor series for sine x, and you multiply them together. So if you were to do that, cos is 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial, plus x to the 4 over 4 factorial, and so on. And sine is x minus x cubed over 3 factorial, plus x to the 5 over 5 factorial, and so on. And you can multiply these together to get the answer, which would be right. But again, there's a much easier way of doing this one. If you know your trig formulas, you should know that 2 cos x sine x is just equal to um, sine of 2x. Sorry. So therefore, cos x sine x is equal to half sine 2x. Okay, And you know that the Taylor series of sine x is, I've written up there, x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 5 over 5 factorial, and so on. So all I have to do is substitute x goes to 2x and times a half. So then we get that cos x times sine x. So take this, x goes to 2x and multiply by a half. So the first one gives me 2x half times 2x minus 2x cubed over 3 factorial plus 2x to the 5 over 5 factorial and so on. Okay, so you can simplify this if you want. This is x minus 4x cubed over 3 factorial plus 16x to the 5 over 5 factorial and so on. That's another example. So I'm just doing lots of different examples because you need to get good at knowing when to calculate the series from the definition, when to multiply two Taylor series together, when to manipulate the function, and so on. So I'm just going to do two more examples which are connected to show you some slightly different methods. So the next example, I think this is number six, this is an example where you've got a combination of two functions. So they're not multiplied together, but they're combined. In other words, so the one I'm going to look at is log of cosine of x around the point a equals 0. So here you take x, you do cosine of x, and then you do log. So again, you could do this from the definition, but there's a slightly easier way using the fact that you know the Taylor series of cos and you know the Taylor series of log. Right? So the Taylor series of cos is 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4 over 4 factorial. And again, I'll just go up to x to the 4. So therefore, log of cos x should be equal to log of 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4 over 4 factorial minus and so on. Okay. And I can write this as log of 1 plus minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4 over 4 factorial and so on. Okay, And we know I'll do this in a different color. I hope you can see the difference in color there. We know that the log of 1 plus x is x minus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 and so on. So you can see this is the log of 1 plus something. So we can take the Taylor series for log and we can substitute x 
for this sum here. So if we take this one and we'd say x goes to minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4 over 4 factorial, then you get the answer, namely that log of cos of x is equal to, so first term is x, which here is this infinite sum. The next term is minus x squared over 2, so that's minus a half times this squared, and then x cubed over 3, so that's plus a third times this sum cubed, and so on. So this is, again, the Taylor series of log of cos x, but you should, in the final answer, put all of the coefficients of the same power of x together. So the first term is x squared over 2, which you only get from here. So this is minus x squared over 2. And then you've got the coefficients of x to the 4. x to the 4 you can get in two different ways. There's one here, which is 1 over 4 factorial. And you can also get it from this squared, so this gives you x to the 4 over 4 times minus a half, that's minus an eighth. Okay, so then simplify this out. Okay, so you can work out x to the 6 and so on as well. I won't. This is minus x squared over 2. This turns out to be minus, so this is, I'll use a pencil. Okay. This is 1 over 24 minus 1 over 8, which is 1 minus 3 over 24, which is minus 2 over 24, which is minus 1 twelfth. So this gives you minus x to the 4 over 12. Okay. And you can work out higher terms too. Okay. This is about as difficult as it will get on the test. So if you think this is difficult, I mean, you're probably right, but it won't get any more difficult than this. So if you can do this, you should be OK. The final example I'm going to give is connected to this one. Suppose you want to work out the Taylor series of tangent of x at a equals 0. Now, again, you can do it from the definition, calculating derivatives of tan x which is a bit difficult. Um, however, we've worked out, I think it was one of the questions on the practice sheet last week, we showed that d by dx of log of cos x was equal to tangent of x. Minus tangent of x. Okay, So therefore, you can get the Taylor series just by differentiating this Taylor series. Therefore, the Taylor series of tan x is just minus d by dx of this Taylor series, which is minus x squared over 2, minus x to the 4 over 12, and so on. So this differentiate, this gives you, so minuses all cancel, this gives you just x, this gives you x cubed over 3. So just in case you think the next term is x to the 5 over 5, you are wrong. I haven't worked it out here. But the next term turns out, turns out to be my uh, plus 2x to the 5 over 15. Okay, So this sequence is not simple. This Taylor series of tan x is not straightforward. I just wanted to show you that. Okay, so these are seven examples, and these are all similar to the examples that are on the practice sheet and that are going to be on the test this week. Um, so I hope you can do at least a few of these. So there's going to be a range of questions on the test. Some of them are going to be easy, 
like just the basic Taylor series, okay, which I suggest you learn. And then some of them, one or two, will be more difficult like this.